Indiana Outdoor Adventures TV show is coming on and don't you know they've got a new adventure planned just for you you'll be wishing you were in the Indiana Outdoors too it may be hunting could be fishing keeping alive some old tradition from the days of long ago well head on out without a doubt with us you can go on the indiana outdoor adventures tv show welcome to indiana outdoor adventures i'm troy mccormick and joining me today is joe dunnigan and we're in hendricks county today and joe where are we we're about nine miles west of plainfield uh in a little town called amo indiana this is the Conservation Bird Dog Club. And we're here today for the National Shoot to Retrieve Dog Trials, the pre-trials. Joe, we're a little curious about this uh, uh, Nistra, Nastra, Nastra, there you Nastra, go. N-S-T-R-A. Dog Trials. How did it get started? I heard it happen right here at this club. Uh, it was actually originally thought of in 1968, 1978. It was formally founded right here at this club by our members. Uh, it give the guys that basically decided they wanted to be competitive and have something to do, so they formed NSTRA or National Shoot to Retrieve Association right here at AMO, and it basically give them something to do throughout the year on the off season for bird hunting, give them you know to practice their dogs, keep their dogs in shape, and it's grown into a nationwide uh, sportsman society. I mean, because you've got people in uh, clubs in all 50 states. And how many national tournaments do you have or trials? Uh, the club here, we hold two national events every year. We hold uh, Dog of the Year in October, which is coming up this week. And then in April, we'll hold a Champion of Champions trial. Uh, and then they hold the Quell Invitational every year in Florida. <clears throat> the Perina Endurance is held in the West somewhere every year. Okay. And, and, like, you know, we're here today. we got guys out in the field. They're not just from Indiana. We're, we're all, where are all the guys coming from today? Uh, today we got guys from Illinois, Kentucky, Montana, Georgia, Florida. Uh, just almost every state uh, in the United States is represented here today. Uh, get on the NASTRA website. You can look up whatever region. If you want to join NASTRA, there's a region located for you, uh, whether it be the Mid-North region in Iowa, the Indiana region for Indiana. Illinois has two regions, northern and and northern region. You're, you're kind of this hidden little gem of national competition that's going on in Indiana that people don't know about. Is it just the dog world only that people know, or are we trying to get the word out about the, what's going on here? Well, I'm trying to get the word out. Uh, right. This place has been around for a long time. Back in the 70s, it was pretty highly publicized in the newspapers and the media, and uh, it seemed like today we've kind of fell away from it. And, in today's world where multimedia is, everybody should know everything, there's a lot of people that live right around this place that don't even know this place exists, Troy. Well, you know, I got an email from you earlier in the year inviting me to come. You know, it was like, I just didn't realize that we had a national dog trials going on here. And, you know, really, there are, there's license plates all from all over the place out in the parking lot. We've got guys who love their dogs, they love working their dogs. And it's a, it's a chance to come out and not only show off the, the training and the breeding that's gone into it, but to show off the dogs because they really are put to the test. Oh, exactly. We ask, these, we ask bird dogs in the natural format to do a lot of what I call unnatural things that normal bird hunters don't ask their dogs to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, these dogs here, starting Wednesday, will have 196 dogs from all over the United States and it's the best 196 dogs in the country. And then when you come here in April for our champions trial, there'll be somewhere around the same amount of dogs, and every one of those dogs are proven dogs. They are at least a one-time national cha or one-time champion uh, to even be invited to come here and run. So in April, that's the best of the very best. Sounds like one. Yeah. T let's back up and tell me a little bit more about the Conservation Club here. Uh, I know you weren't around when it got started. But <laughs> I wasn't uh, born yet. Conservation clubs uh, back in the, the 40s and the 50s and the 60s, uh, what was then, now is the Department of Natural Resources, was the Department of Conservation. 
yes. worked a lot with helping to establish these conservation clubs. And a lot of them got started with pheasant and quail. A lot of them got started for planting trees or stocking fish in ponds. What kind of happened here in those early days? Uh, actually, how the club was formed, there was 12 gentlemen back in 1958. Uh, they were all bird hunters. Uh, I'm assuming they were mutual friends. They decided, except when they were competing. <laughs> except when they got <laughs> competing a few years later. They basically got together and formed uh, the Conservation Bird Dog Club. Okay. Uh, it wasn't until early 1970s when they bought this piece of property here and they made it the Conservation Bird Dog Club of Amo. And then in 1978, they formed NASTER here. And it grew to from a 20 membership group to a 100 membership ex uh, exclusive group to have rights here on the property. Pete, tell me what we're out here doing today. Um, we're out here uh, at a shoot to retrieve. <coughs> Uh, dog trial where uh, we got a bird planter that goes out and plants five birds and uh, me and a dog run against uh, another handler and his dog for half an hour and we try to find as many birds as we can with good crown coverage and obedience. Great. And, 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 <laughs> he's happy about something. Yeah. Tell me about the, uh, uh, the brace we ran where I was filming you. How did it go for you? First uh, brace of the day, uh, got out there. Dew started coming off, got a little warmer, and uh, went out and got five birds, put them on the card, got them all scored. Um, hope we can do that the rest of the day. Pretty good luck for my first run. First run of the day. What's this like uh, as far as what was the most challenging part of today so far then, that first brace? Uh, to make sure you get around the whole field, cover the whole thing with the dog, make sure uh, we, we uh, got our birds shot got all our retrieves, and um, just make sure we do give the dog a chance to cover the whole field. I mean, it looks like it'd wear me out just trying to keep up with the dog. That's a big 30 plus acre field you have to. Right, uh, 30 minutes when you feel like you gotta cover the whole thing, you gotta move around pretty good and uh, make sure you just ain't standing still watching too much. Um, make sure that you keep the dog moving and you follow the dog at the same time when he's moving and hope you hit all the spots. Welcome back to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. We're at the National Shoot to Retrieve Dog Trials today in Amo, Indiana, and uh, this is where it all begins. This is a six week old uh, German short hair, and all, she already knows how to uh, uh, retrieve. You're gonna love the footage we've got of this. How's that? Look at that. Oh, you gonna bring it up to me? <laughs> right to the camera. Look at that. You ain't gonna get a better shot now. <laughs> Roger, tell the viewers a little bit about the uh, National Shoot to Retrieve Dog Trials. What is it that the guys and the dogs are trying to do? Well, uh, National Shoot to Retrieve is a, a walking field trial uh, organization. Um, it's a uh, uh, a competition uh, that involves two handlers with their dogs, five birds placed in a field, mm -hmm. and it's basically a race to see who can get the most out of the five birds. Right? It's not just a simulated hunt, it is an actual hunt. Yeah, the, uh, the handlers and the dogs have to, of course, work in unison, and the object is the dog has to point the bird, the handler has to get to the dog, flush the bird, shoot it, the dog has to make a retrieve, and then the handler and the dog can go on to the next bird. Now, there's a lot of nuances that go into it, uh, and we've got we've got one judge on an ATV for each hunter. What is it that the judges are looking for? Well, the scoring system is based on uh, the find of the bird. The dog is scored on that. Uh, the dog is scored on the retrieve. He's scored for honoring his bracemate if he sees his bracemate point. Uh, the dog's also scored on obedience and ground coverage. And the, you, each dog has a judge in the field. Uh, that judge follows them around, uh, looks at their obedience and ground coverage and the style that they have on point, how hard they hit the bird. And on the retrieves, they're looking for, you know, aggressive retrieves, uh, back to hand. Um, well, what about the style of the point? I mean, that's the beauty of pointers, you know. Yeah, uh, pointing dogs, yeah, that's a fascinating thing yeah. to watch. Um, styles, you know, 
like anything, is in the eye of the beholder. But uh, what a judge is really looking for is, is when did the dog make game and how he uh, uh, approached the point. Uh, did he lock up on point as soon as he came across the scent cone? Mm -hmm. uh, but that only happens when they cross a scent cone. True. So uh, how far away did they work the bird directly upwind? And so there's different factors that okay. you have to put into and, play. And there is a scoring system. So the judges yeah. are writing scores. Yes, uh, the scoring system uh, on, a, on a find, the bird is zero to a hundred, the retrieve is zero to a hundred, but a back is zero to seventy-five, uh, and then your ground coverage and obedience are scored on a, a, on a scale of zero to seventy-five, and your ground coverage on zero to a hundred. Wow! Okay. So, um, but a, a, a nice piece of work generally will score in the mid-eighties, uh, an excellent piece of work is going to be in the nineties, and Anything less than that, you're going to see your 70s and 60s sure. and 40s. So, uh, you know, the object of, of NASTRA is it, it's a walking field trial, but it's a simulated hunt uh, as if you were hunting with a buddy and his dog, right. and you have that competitive nature. You're trying to, to do it. better than they, your buddy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a. Uh, it added a little, that, and that's how the, the sport started. Now, this is the national shoot to retrieve. So, these aren't just guys uh, with dogs here in Indiana. No, uh, almost every state um, in the United States is re is okay. represented. Uh, we have regions around the country that uh, you can participate in a local level. We also hold five national events a year. And, uh, and this is one of them? Yes. Okay. Now, these aren't just uh, guys with dogs from Indiana. This is the, the national shoot to retrieve. So how big of an area or how far away do guys come to compete in AMO, Indiana? Well, uh, AMO, Indiana actually is, is the founding club of National Shoot to Retrieve. Um, it was founded back in the 60s by some friends that were competing with their bird dogs. It's always competition with friends. Yeah, there you go. And so AMO, Indiana was the founding club for NASTRA. Okay. And uh, uh, it hosts regional trials, uh, which Indiana is its own region. And there are multi-state regions out west and, and uh, farther south. But uh, Indiana is its own region. And you can compete on a local level, or you can compete on a national level. And that's represented represented uh, by five national trials, and they're kind of spread out around the country. But this one's hosted here in Amo. That's amazing. You know, we've got this little town uh, west of Indianapolis that kind of started the whole thing. Um, now, is, is it fair to call you a dog breeder, a dog trainer, or what, what exactly are you in this competition, and where all do you travel? Well, I tra I've traveled uh, as far as Washington State, um, okay. uh, as far south as Florida, <laughs> far far north as Wisconsin, uh, chasing dogs uh, with an Astra. But uh, because you have quite a few dogs, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, we breed uh, English Setters and German Short Hairs uh, at my kennel. Uh, that's Kickapoo Farm and Kennel. But uh, we breed uh, Setters and Short Hairs, and uh, but we breed and run our own dogs on the national circuit, uh, along with the the local regional circuits. Okay. So and so so you're breeding and you're you're training and then you're in competitions. Uh, yes, at Nastra, uh, one of our sayings is breeding better bird dogs okay. and. Uh, you know, our trial dogs uh, are, are, are not just specific trial dogs. They're dogs that you can take hunting on the weekend or during the week and field trial them on the, uh, the weekend or use them at a preserve. And, but what we're looking for is, is to enhance the bird dog community. Uh, we're looking for we broke dogs. So, you know, we, uh, we're, that's hence the scoring system right. because, you know, we're trying to reward uh, uh, folks for skills the skills of the dog okay. right? and you know it's not a time and shell type of uh of competition mm -hmm. you know this is about one dog braced against another dog because uh, I mean, when they let those dogs go and they hightail it out and they're immediately searching for that scent cone you talked about correct well they're you know, generally hunting you know between a 25 to 40 acre field with five birds placed in the field yeah. And it those the five birds total or five birds per person? 
five birds total. So uh, naturally, you're looking for a three to two split or better. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, everybody wants the four to one or five to nothing. I explain to me. We saw uh, a couple different times where one dog went on point, and the brace mate came right up, locked in right behind him. Yeah, that's called honoring a point. Okay. And. Uh, what, what you're trying to establish is that your dog will honor the other dog's point. So, you know, some things that you can relate to, to hunting situations. If you're out and you're hunting and one dog and you're with a group of people and one dog points a bird, you don't want the other dogs rushing in to see what he's pointing. They bust the bird. Yeah. Bust the bird. So, you know, it's... Uh, it's manners in the field. Okay, well that's good. They're teaching the dog good manners. manners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and things like that can apply to to, to general hunting. Yeah. And okay. uh, most of the dogs that uh, compete in these events are are also uh, very good hunting dogs. Okay. Well, and speaking of that, you know, you mentioned that you've got a kennel. Yes. Uh, and you you've got a uh, a game preserve. Yes. In that you take hunters at Kickapoo Kennels and, or is it Kickapoo Farm and Kennels? Kickapoo Farm and Kennels. Yeah, and, and you take uh, hunters out for uh, upland game birds. Correct, yes. Is there any difference to training dogs for field trials versus training dogs for uh, hunting situations in an operation like that? I, th I think the only difference is really polish. Okay. You know, everybody wants their dog to point the bird, and right. everybody wants their dog to retrieve the bird. It's kind of the standard goal. Right. Yeah. And it's the difference in the field trial is, uh, uh, you know, one, it's a competitive environment, mm -hmm. but uh, the polish on the dogs. Okay. And it's uh, instead of the dog dropping the bird in front of you a foot, he Bring set, it. brings it and sets it in your hand. or. Instead of the dog taking a couple steps towards the bird on yeah. point, he'll lock up, and and you know that's where we utilize the scoring system sure. for proficiency of that piece of work. So most good, you could say that most good bird dogs can point and retrieve, but the trials tell you the great bird dogs. Yes, yes, uh, it's the polish on the dog. There it's the go. ones that do it right all the time. Good. You you talked about what's happening in October, what happens in April, what goes on the rest of the year here at the club. Well, throughout the year, we hold 32 weekend NASTRA events, or uh, six club trial events. We have a Boy Scout group that comes out and does stuff. We do a sycamore group for handicapped people uh, back at our seven-acre pond. We take them back fishing for the day. Uh, the Golden Retriever Club comes out here and you, you has their annual hunt test here. Uh, Next spring, we're working on something for uh, Hoosier Hunter and Retriever Club. They're going to run their annual test on our property. We usually have something going on in the dog world almost all the time, at least once or twice throughout every month. So pretty much your members are dog owners. Yeah, to be a member here, you have to own a pointing dog. <laughs> and it has to be a pointing dog. What kind of breeds does that include? Uh, what are the guys like? The mainstay around here will be English pointers, German short-haired pointers, uh, we have a few Britneys, a uh, few English setters for a few people. Uh, those are your basic main breeds. We've had a few club members in the past uh, have German wire hairs. We, we've probably seen every basis of, of the pointing breed. If you look up the pointing breed, uh, we've probably had one member or somebody somewhere along the line that even own one. That had one. <laughs> well, that's good. Now, uh, safety is paramount here. I know that we've got. Uh, a referee or a, a judge. A judge. This this was my uh, ride for the day. The the judge. I got to ride on the ATV uh, behind Joe. Uh, we we had judges who are watching not only how the dogs are performing. Uh, I know you're looking to make sure that the shots taken. Uh, they've got a clear view. The the hunters and the, the guys working the dogs. They were working really hard to make sure that the safety was uh, important. Also. Yeah, that's uh, we really boast on our safety here. Uh, one of the club rules is no matter what time of the year it is, whether you're working dogs or not, hunters orange always must be worn on our property if you're outside, you know, the clubhouse here. Uh, judges, you know, throughout the day, we have certified judges. They take eight-hour classes to be certified. They ride braces, do an apprenticeship. And basically, you know, as a judge, we, we're out there not just to score a dog, but we're out there also to make sure handlers aren't running through the field with their guns. Uh, 
all the shots, if the shot's taken, it's, it's done in a safe manner. You know, we don't want a dog injured or a judge, you know. Well, I know because when they let those dogs go, man, they are just gone. And the hunters, they're, they're, they're walking as fast as they can, but they're not allowed to run. No, they're not allowed to run, and we, uh, we basically, uh, you know, we call it a speed walk. Right. I tell people at work all the time, I can walk as fast as most people can jog <laughs> from doing this for quite a few years. But uh, Now, as a judge, do you get a chance to work your dogs? Yeah, I, I, what I try to do is on the weekends, when we're running weekends trials, what a lot of times what I'll do is I'll judge a day and then I run a day. Okay. So I play, I get to do both. There you go, best of both worlds. Exactly. Now, if somebody wanted to uh, get involved, maybe they, they used to have a dog, they've got a new dog, maybe they just didn't know that this opportunity was here, how can they find out more information? Uh, we got a website, uh, it's www.amocbdc.net. Uh, or get online and you can look up uh, NASTRA at www.nstra.org and uh, go to regions, look at the Indiana region, and you'll find our, our scheduled events for all our NASTRA trials throughout the state of Indiana, also here at the club. Or because we've got viewers all over the country, they want, might want to look in Florida, they could look in Georgia, Texas. Yes. Got yeah, the NASTRA, once you pull up the website, uh, the NASTRA website, just go to regions. Now, you know, we, we've talked about the past. Let's look toward the future a little bit. Uh, you know, outdoor sports, uh, we're having trouble keeping youth interested and involved because they all want to text on their phones or they want to play their video games on the computer. Uh, are, are you doing some programs? You mentioned the Boy Scouts. Uh, yeah, we also, uh, through our club trial events, we, we've been trying to put on and have a juniors division which is five-year-old to 16-year-old uh, of age. And if, if somebody who doesn't have a dog or they used to have a dog wants to come out and see the trials, are they allowed, is the public allowed in? Yeah, when we're having a trial here, uh, the gates are always open. Feel free to come here, look at look around. There isn't a whole lot right around the clubhouse here, but it was nice because uh, they've got food for us today. You can buy a sandwich, you can buy a bowl of chili, you can buy, I had even some uh, pie up there for, for dessert. So, you know, you can come out, you can spend the day. They've got these really cool kind of elevated viewing platforms so you can get up to look down onto the field uh, and, and watch the trials. Just real quick, it brought to mind, how big are the fields that the dogs are working? Uh, we have three fields here at AMO. Uh, a field, our mainstay, it's uh, approximately 36 to 38 acres, counting on how big you actually, the trial field's about 36 acres. There's almost 40 there, but we only use about 36. B field is just under 30, and then the back field, C field, it has 28 acres of trial grounds on it. So, you know, you've got, you've got two dogs, and you've got 30 plus acres, and they've only put five quail out there. It's like looking for five tennis balls. Oh my gosh, I know. It's just like the, those little quail are, are planted out somewhere in the field in 30 acres, and those dogs have to cover that, locate, point, and have their hunter come up, take the shot, and then they retrieve. All in under 30 minutes. And they only have, yeah, they got 30 minutes to find them. And of course, you know, the more you get, the better you're going to score, and the better the dog performs and the hunter. Does the hunter, do you get loose points if he misses the bird? Yeah, if he misses the bird and the dog's unable to make a retrieve, then he'll get a slash. So, yes, he needs to be able to shoot his bird. So it's not just the dogs being judged. It's no. the handlers, too. Yeah, because the handler can mess a dog up for the day. Great. I'm anxious to get back out. Uh, to watch a couple more, uh, are they are they considered heats, events? Braces. Braces. I want to see a couple more braces, so if you don't mind me climbing back on the ATV with you again, we'll go out and check some more out. Let's go. I'm ready. Sounds good, Joe. Thanks a lot. Thank you.